All right, guys. So we have a special treat, and hopefully we'll be eating some special treats soon uh, from Matt Owens at Power Puck, and we have Serena of Carnivore Revolution. Carnivore, what, or so sorry, Carnivore. Serena, what are you munching on right now? <laughs> you got your I'm LMNT eating. drink. You're just a, a walking ship. Look, right? I, I like my people. You know what I mean? I feel like if we can all support each other and we can eat and drink as many of these like carnivore people's products as we can, I think we'll all be better off. And so um, I just took a bite of my Bear Bar, which is a new product coming out from Matt and Allison from Power Puck. And I've eaten a lot of protein bars over the years, like a lot of protein bars. And this, it's like a nugget. Like the texture of this is so delicious. It's almost like light and fluffy though. And it has uh, 270 calories, 15 grams of fat, 12 grams of carbs, because it does have some honey in it and 20 grams of protein in this little bar. Like it is so good. So Matt, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to buy myself a big box of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had, we had great feedback about them at, at Meat Stock, which is our animal based retreat that we have every year. And uh, I can tell you, people are chomping at the bed. I, I'm not gonna name any names, but some of the stuff out there has gone pretty pricey. And uh, I'm not ordering too much out there, but I am. Or I do have a power pucks order out for delivery today in my house, <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to having a new bar out there that is, you know, that I don't have to break the bank for. That tastes really good, it's healthy. Um, Matt, maybe you could just uh, before I, I really want to get into your story and back things up a little bit, but maybe you could just tell us a little bit about this new product you have coming up before we get into that. Yeah, of course. Um, so we call it the bear bar, like Serena said, and um, really we wanted to make, or the goal for this product was to make the uh, the least ingredient kind of protein bar that we could. Um, so this is a little different from the other products that we sell, the power pucks and the super chews. Um, this was kind of geared more towards folks that are looking for like a kind of the on the go protein bar. And um, what we really wanted was um you know, try to have as least amount of ingredients as possible. And we have three main ingredients in this bar, uh, plus a pinch of salt. So that, that was about as low as you can go. We got a fat, which is tallow. We got a protein, which we're using beef protein. And uh, beef protein is, um, I, this is one of the only bars, if not the first bar that just has um, beef protein in it rather than whey. Um, then we've got a little bit of organic honey, like Serena mentioned, to hold it all together because you need some sort of binder and something there for a little bit of uh, sweetness. And then just a pinch of salt. So that's it. So really kind of four ingredients was the absolute least we could uh, concoct a, a usable dough with. And it actually tastes pretty good too. Um, so we're excited to launch it, you know, um, a bar where you can, everybody knows exactly what is on the ingredient label and, and uh, you know, what they're going to be eating. And, and it should be, you know, com price competitive with those other protein bars that you see in the grocery store. So yeah. Um, we are finalizing the bags and packaging and all that stuff right now. Hopefully in about six weeks, we can um, start shipping the first batches. But yeah, we're excited. Um, we've shipped out a bunch of samples to people and the feedback's been really good so far. And uh, we're, we're excited to ship it to more people as soon as we can. I think even aside from low carb, which it does have 12 grams of carbs in it, um, but that's still pretty low carb. So I think even aside from the low carb carnivore keto kind of group, um, I think you could have a really good customer base of people that have that have allergies because this is soy free, dairy free, nut free. I mean, it is it is free from egg free. It's free from all major allergens, too. And so I think that's huge to have something like this come out on the market where protein bars are already so popular. You know, everybody likes a good protein bar. And I think this just kind of raises the bar, so to speak, on that. Um, I mean, this is this is I've had a lot of protein bars. And honestly, this is. The, probably my favorite one ever really good and i love the ingredient list i i know like in the carnivore space honey can be a little bit controversial and some people yeah. will be like i won't touch to honey with a 10 foot pole mm -hmm. to be honest i was a little bit worried about because i don't do super well with honey but mm -hmm. there there's like a little bit of sweetness but to me it was just like a hint of it hint of the yeah. honey mm -hmm. you know for me it was more about i just love the texture of it yeah the, like, it's like a little bit in your mouth is like so yeah. nice Mm -hmm. But it is a really nice taste at the same time, you know? So that's cool. And there's that, that, like, that hint of salt, it's Redmond salt, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, Redmond salt. Yeah, so you're getting a good salt source. I mean, not like, you know, this iodine plastic ridden salt that, that they load up these bars with. 
And so you get that bit of the 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 sweet and salty at the same time. It's just like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, yeah I kind of yeah, aged it. myself when I when I told you it tastes like a bit of honey. And you were like, what's a bit oh, of yeah. honey? And so for the older <laughs> viewers out there that know that remember that candy, I don't know if it's still out there or not, but it reminds me of a bit of honey kind of candy. It's like chewy. It's not nearly as sweet as that, but there's something about it that just reminds me of that a little bit. Really good. Yeah, it's nice and uh, it's... I like it because it's like the texture you said, it's uh, it's like firm when you bite into it, but then the tallow melts in your mouth really quickly. So it's, it's just, uh, there's not a lot of bars out there that are, uh, you know, protein bars and, uh, and, uh, specifically that, that have tallow in them, you know, there's mm -hmm. maybe only one or two other ones that have a little bit of tallow, but this one is almost, I mean, this one's pure tallow for the, for the fat source. Um, so it, it does give it that different texture and, uh, yeah, the, with the honey, you know, we, for to make like none of our other products have carbs in it they're all zero carbs but for this one to try to our, I mean, again with our goal being the least amount of ingredients possible um going with with honey was really what we needed to do and we needed some some liquid like that as, to help help bind it all and make it into a dough and so the two that we tested out was honey and maple syrup and mm. uh they're both good the maple syrup bar is really good too um, we're probably going to, we'll, we'll launch that one, uh, at some point, but we're going to start with the, the honey one first and, uh, try to get those ones out for people to, to start tasting and, uh, see, see how it goes from there. Mm -hmm. You call awesome. it the Canadian, the Canadian version of the bear bar was some yeah. maple, maple there honey in there or <laughs> maple right. sugar in there. Yeah. Um, so what are, okay. yeah, I want to get into your story, but what are, what are the benefits of, of tallow? Like what, what's the benefit of, of beef? Obviously. Is there a benefit of beef over whey? Obviously, there's like no dairy in beef and the beef protein. And maybe you could just list off a couple of health benefits of tallow. I don't know if either one of you guys want to take that question, but. Yeah, I mean, I can start, um, you know, beef protein. We wanted something with beef protein. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a muscle building protein. It's a complete protein. There's not a lot of bars or anything that really use beef protein because whey is so prevalent. Uh, but there are folks that don't do well with whey. And, um, and that's why we wanted to kind of have a, a beef source, you know, nobody really, um, cares. Like if you're fine with whey protein or, or nobody's, nobody's like allergic to beef protein that I've ever really come across. Uh, there's people right. that have the issues with the whey, but if you're fine with whey protein, all those people are also fine with beef protein. And so that's why we wanted to try to, to use the beef, um, in, in this product. And then with the tallow, there's just a lot more uh, vitamins and, and, uh, minerals in tallow than there is other, um, other fats, especially the fats that they have to process from, from seeds. Um, you know, we use, we do use in some of our other products, cacao butter. We think, I think cacao butter has a, a you know, great stearic acid profile. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a very good, uh, saturated fat as well. Um, but with this bar, it just, uh, the tallow is softer and it just, uh, it gives it that more of that texture that, um, I think is unique with it. And, and, um, you know, there also, like I said, aren't a lot of bars that use tallow. There's a whole bunch that use, uh, cacao, but there's not a lot that use, um, tallow. So we wanted to try to keep this as much animal products as we could. Awesome. Yeah. And I think, you know, like Matt said, the beef has beef fat has all kinds of nutrients in it. It's got multiple vitamins in it. It has collagen in it. Like and on a cellular level, something like a beef fat is more compatible with our bodies just in general than a plant protein or, you know, even from whey, um, just typically the beef products are going to be better for us just in general. And so I think that the beef tallow was a great choice for this. And I can't wait to see these at the market. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Here's an idea for you guys. I'm just speaking off the top of my head right now. Because everybody, you know, I recently got into butter again. I haven't eaten butter in years, but for some reason, all of a sudden, a few days ago, I'm like, wow, I could eat butter again. I don't even know how I realized that, but I just had a big stick of butter. I was like, wow, this is the best thing in the world. Is it possible to make like a butter protein bar? Is that a, is that a thing? Would that be possible? Or is that, it'd be too melty? What what would be the problem with that, Matt? Um, I think you can use it. The the only, the but the the issue I think you'd run into is, there's higher water content in uh, butter than there uh, is the tallow. Um, it would expire pretty quickly. Yeah, so it yeah. would. Uh, it, it'd have probably just a shorter shelf life, or you'd have to add more um, other ingredients to help dry that up. Uh, so maybe more mm -hmm. powder or more salt or something like that. Okay. That well, we'll, we'll work on a bar together, all three of us. Yeah. Some kind of butter bar. <laughs> butter That's bar, right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Matt. Maybe you could just get into your story a little bit. Um, 
I'm very curious as to how you started this company, what got you into the carnivore space and uh, yeah, are, are you strict carnivore? I just kind of want to learn the little details about how you got up, you know, started with all this stuff. Yeah, of course. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, I started or me and my wife and our family kind of went on the carnivore train. And um, so this would be like 2021, uh, uh, I think middle of 2021, we started and um, I went kind of full steam ahead into it. And the uh, my wife, Allison and the kids, they started with just kind of eggs and meat and then also still eating some fruit. And uh, it was something that we were going to do for you know, 30 days and turn into a month, a couple months, you know, a year, two years. And so, uh, we went a couple of years, I went a couple of years of eating just straight, um, just straight, basically beef and eggs. Um, I didn't really eat much else besides that is besides these bars that are these pucks that I was making myself. Um, they were, uh, I was trying to find a way to get more fat in what I was eating. Uh, cause it was so easy for me when I was doing it to eat like 300 to 400 grams of protein a day from, cause I could just eat meat all day long. Um, but I wasn't eating very, uh, fatty meat. Um, I was eating a lot of sirloins and stuff. So I started messing around with, uh, tallow and seeing if I could make something to help boost up the amount of fat I was having each day. And, and, uh, I ended up making what we now call the power puck. And it was basically just, uh, some zero carb, uh, whey protein, uh, mixed up with some, some tallow. And, uh, and I was kind of eating that for lunch when I would go to work. Um, then my wife tried to get Allison to eat them and she thought they didn't taste very good. And then one day she said, you know, if you put some of those crushed pork rinds, you bread stuff in, in there, it might be, it'll probably give it some better texture. And so I added the pork rinds in there. It gave it a nice salty kick. Um, and it also gave it a little bit of a crunchy texture, you know, not super crunchy, but a little bit of a crunchy texture. And, um, and it was really good. And then all of a sudden, like our kids started eating them. Um, other people started asking about them. And so, uh, you know, we thought, well, let's see if we can sell a couple of these things. And so we started the company, uh, the power puck, and, um, we began selling the, or trying to sell, sell them. And that was about a year ago, just a little bit over a year ago, uh, from right now. And, um, our first product for probably the first six months or so was, uh, the power pucks. And, uh, we started making them in a cacao base and a tallow base. And, um, you know, the main reason we started with the making some in the cacao base was, what we found was kids that eat a lot of candy already. It was difficult for them to start eating tallow because, you know, most people nowadays don't eat tallow. And so the texture is weird for them in the beginning because they don't, they're not used to eating it. Um, so we, we thought, well, let's, let's make them in cacao. So it has more of a chocolate bar texture and, uh, and that'll be easier for kids to transition to. And, um, so that's why we started making them in cacao uh, as mostly for the kids and, and that, and that helps them. And especially people that don't know what tallow is just to start off with a, uh, a power puck, they can start with cacao and it's usually easier for them to, to get away from whatever junk food they're trying to get away from and start eating, um, these products. We then came out with, uh, or started trying to develop another product that we call super chews. Um, but the goal for that was to address protein. So the, um, the power pucks was kind of to address a way to get saturated fat into people's diets, um, you know, specifically animal fats. Um, and then with the super chews, we wanted to get more protein into people's diets. Cause you know, like my mom, for example, or my wife's mom, they eat like 50 grams of protein a day. It's, it's yeah. incredibly low. And and I think that happens with a lot of people in uh, that eat kind of the standard American diet. They just are so low on protein and they, and they don't realize it. And you can't really buy a good snack that has protein in it. Um, you know, a lot of stuff just has, you know, 10 grams of protein and half of it comes from, you know, gluten or something or some, some grain. And, and, and it's not even a, a really a good muscle building protein. So what we wanted to do is make kind of a gummy, um, and go back to the old way people made it with beef gelatin. Nowadays, pretty much nobody uses beef gelatin anymore to make gummies. They use uh, pectin, which is actually from a plant and that has no protein in it. Um, and so we went back to the drawing board. We used started with beef gelatin, um, and we added in whey protein because uh, we wanted some muscle building proteins. Because if you use just the gelatin as the protein source, then you're only getting it's not a complete protein. You're just getting collagen, um, which which isn't bad either. But the, the mixture we ended up coming up with is about sixty forty. So it's about sixty percent muscle building proteins from the whey, um, and it's about forty percent uh, hair, skin, and nail proteins from the collagen. 
And then we ended up mixing it with a electrolyte powder uh, to give it a little bit of flavor. And, um, and, and that's kind of the, the product. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's pretty unique. It's the, it's the, the, the only gummy that I'm aware of that has actual muscle building proteins in it. Um, uh, it has the most protein of, uh, for serving of any, any gummy that I've come across. And it's also got zero, um, artificial sweeteners. Um, we use stevia as the only sweetener. Uh, so none of, not most, a lot of gummies nowadays use allulose or, or things like that. We're not using any of that stuff. Uh, no erythritol, just a little bit of stevia. And we also have, um, uh, zero, uh, zero grams of fat and zero grams of carbs in these. So when you get a bag of super chews, they're currently 25 grams of protein in a bag and it's a hundred calories. So four calories per gram of protein, the entire bag is all the calories you're getting are literally just pure protein. There's no fat and there's no carbs in it at all. So it's a, it's a great way for somebody to grab a little bag of, uh, you know, right now it's, it's 25 grams, 16 gummies. Uh, you can eat them, uh, and, and get 25 grams of protein right there, which like I said, for like my, my mom or something like that, that's a 50% increase to what she was eating yeah. before. Um, just from a little bag of, of, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, fruit snacks, but, but kind of the healthiest ones out there. Um, we make them in three flavors for those we've got, uh, peach mango, uh, passion fruit. And then we also make a sour one, um, it's for folks who liked, uh, you know, if you used to eat sour candy, like I did, like, uh, um, sour patch kids or something like that. I used to yeah. love those things. And so the sour ones, we just add a little bit of extra malic acid to it, uh, to make it a little sour and, um, and yeah, that's it. And those are, those are great. Uh, kids really like those. Um, you know, oh my, my kids, God, yes. Yeah. So my good. kids take those to, uh, well, my four-year-old takes those to school, um, for lunch every day. And then, uh, my other son who just turned two, he, uh, he loves those. One of the, one of the first words he could say is gummies. And so he always walk around and be like gummy because <laughs> yeah. he always wanted more. They're cute. So yeah. cute. So, so the funny thing is I've tested this out because, you know, um, I I've ordered a bunch from you guys since I know you guys sent us some, some packs for our, our guests to try it at the retreat, but I've been ordering a bunch for myself and I've been giving them to my friends. And I, I tell you, my kids aren't super picky because I, feel like I've worked really hard on them to, you know, I mean, they like their meat, they like their fruit, they eat fruit, you know, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. But, um, but a lot of other kids like, you know, these days, I mean, all they eat is like Mac and cheese or like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch. Like, mm -hmm. and that's, I would say most kids, most kids are just like really, really picky. And, uh, I was giving these out to some of these, pa the parents that I, the ones that I had, and we had some people over for dinner actually just like what, a few weeks ago. And they were loving the Super Chews and the Power Pucks. And I felt really good about that because, you know, especially with the Power Puck is, you know, for developing kids, we're talking like, like my son's two years old. I mean, they need that fat, right? Mm -hmm. They need tallow. Yeah. They need, they need like a cow butter, like you said, is a great source of stearic acid. And then you're also getting protein in there. So it's something like if your kids are picky, like I could guarantee you that they will very likely eat these things. Yeah. So. It's a, uh, you know, feeding kids. So I've got, we've got a four-year-old, we got, uh, uh, another son, like I mentioned that just turned two and then we have a six month old, uh, daughter. So we've been in the thick of it, like figuring out how to feed kids healthier. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny The our, our two-year-old, uh, he, he never had candy before he first had, had started having power pucks and he loves the power pucks. Um, so mm -hmm. he'll eat, he loves the tallow ones. He'll eat those a lot. And, um, you know, they're so filling. So like the, if you get the pocket power pucks, you know, a toddler can eat like three of them and he's basically full yeah. <laughs> because, because they're yeah. so filling. But, uh, you know, our daughter, she's not quite there yet because she's, you know, she doesn't have her teeth in yet, but, uh, um, what we feed her is really just breast milk. And then, uh, you know, I usually make some sort of steak every night. And, um, if you look at my personal Instagram page, I always post videos on there, but she, she'll I'll cut her off like a big piece of fat off the top of a ribeye or something like like four or five inches long and she'll just gnaw on that thing like a like a wild animal it's it's really <laughs> funny to watch you like put a carrot in front of her or something and she just doesn't even touch it and you put down like some beef jerky or a piece of fatty meat or brisket and they just go crazy for it it's, it's really that's funny. the instinct it's yeah. the instinct it's been lost <laughs> along the way but yeah. really that's our instinct i think you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's interesting. So I, I kind of see, I just want to get a little bit more into detail as to, you know, you told me that you got a carnivore, but 
what was the was there a health reason that really got you onto the carnivore diet or no so i uh um i used to exercise a lot and then because of my other job i used to have i ended up having like a four year period up from like 20 15 to 2019 where I like basically stopped working out and uh 2019 I started working out religiously again and um then started just tinkering around with different ways of eating uh, or different diets that uh, you know I wasn't necessarily doing a lot of things as much as I was just kind of researching and listening to podcasts and listening to what other people were doing and uh you know the one that actually intrigued me the most is when I came across, uh, you know, Sean Baker and, and Saladino and those guys talking about, um, eating meat only. And I thought, you know, that is something I would definitely like to do because those are my favorite things to eat. Um, yeah. and so I, I just researched it for like six months before I started doing it. Um, at the same time I, I had lost like, uh, um, like 40 or 45 pounds and I was like unknowingly, um, just, eating more and more plant-based, not necessarily on purpose, just, uh, I don't know, just like was slowly like happening. And, uh, and I was becoming kind of frail. And, uh, so then I decided, you know, we should try this carnivore diet and see what happens. And, um, and it was awesome. I was like, you know, everything changed for me. I got, you know, my, uh, energy came back tremendously from what it was. And over the next like year, year and a half, I, slowly gained like 35 pounds back. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and most of it was muscle. I did a lot of DEXA scans and stuff like that. Um, for, from the beginning to, to later, um, you know, obviously it wasn't all muscle, but I still put on probably like over 20 pounds of muscle in that like 18 months, which is not easy to do. Um, but I was just losing muscle slowly because I was, you know, not eating good sources of protein. I was eating, um, you know, I, I was still probably getting a hundred to a hundred and 30 grams of protein a day, which wasn't enough the way I look at it now, but, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't good, like meat protein. It was, um, you know, I was only eating like egg whites and, uh, you know, salmon and, and stuff like that. I wasn't getting any like good beef. Um, so anyways, I started eating that way. I felt a lot better. Um, started gaining some more mass, uh, back, uh, my wife ended up feeling a lot better, uh, too, uh, getting rid of the vegetables. And we've honestly never, I never really have had, I haven't had a vegetable since then. Um, my kids have never really had a vegetable at all. I think our oldest probably had a couple when he was really young, but probably not after he was one. Wow. Um, are they straight carnivore? Do they eat fruit or? They, they eat fruit too. So like, uh, my, my four-year-old every morning, I, I make, uh, I make, uh, like once every other week, a bunch of yogurt out of raw milk. Um, so he has that every morning. It's his favorite thing to eat. He eats oh, that with, awesome. eats that with a little bit of honey and blueberries um for breakfast. <laughs> it's like the exact same yeah. diet i feed my kids yeah yeah so he eats, he eats that my other my other kid loves bacon sausage and eggs and so he has that for breakfast every morning and then um yeah for for lunch a lot of times they'll have a you know a, a power puck or they'll have leftovers from the night before um uh, or or something like that and then for dinner every night i usually make some sort of uh some sort of meat um you know fish is usually only once every week or two um, beef is what I make pretty much every night. I'll have ribs every once in a while. Um, we're going to make lamb tonight, but, uh, yeah, you usually just have a big plate of meat. And then if the boys want like a banana or something like that, they'll have that as well. Um, that's kind of it. You know, we haven't had vegetables in a very long time. Um, I do make every once in a while, uh, my own sourdough bread. Um, and you know, I just use a starter and, uh, an old ancient grain and there's nothing else in there. Um, and, I don't really eat that, but the, the boys will eat that every once in a while. And, and so will, uh, my, my wife, Allison, but, um, you know, that's kind of few and far between mostly it's just the, the berries that we have. And then the, the, the meat that we're eating. And so I, 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 in... or I was going to say ahead. real quick after, after like two years or so, I stopped with the strict carnivore and it wasn't for any like real particular reason. I just, um, I'm an engineer by background. And so I like recording data and seeing what happens. And, uh, so I wanted to see what would happen if I just started eating a bunch of carbs again. And so I, uh, I just added in basically a bunch of fruit and, and a little bit of honey, and I just wanted to see what happened and, uh, nothing really happened. Um, you know, I didn't like feel 
really different in any way. Like my sleep didn't get better or worse. My energy didn't go up or down. You know, there was nothing, nothing like that, that, um, I noticed anyways, you know, my workouts didn't get better or worse. Um, you know, it all kind of stayed the same. It was a struggle though, to try to eat. I was, I was, I was purposely trying to eat like 200 grams of carbs a day just to see what would happen. And now I'm not doing that anymore. And I've just slowly kind of gravitated back towards mostly meat, um, and, and eggs. So, you know, I'll eat, I eat a bunch of eggs every morning. Um, I usually don't get super hungry during the day, but I'll, if I do, I'll lately I've had like a power puck or a bear bar. Um, and then the big steak I cook for dinner each night is usually kind of what I've gravitated back to. I'll, I might have a, you know, a, a banana or a, or an orange or something every once in a while, but, uh, but I'm not like eating 10 of those a day. Like I was for a couple of months there just to see what would happen. Yeah. And, and I think we should point out that Allison just had a very successful, very healthy, basically mostly carnivore pregnancy. So very meat based with some fruit. Right. And and yep. and her pregnancy was great. The delivery was great. Like she was really healthy the whole time. And the baby is really healthy. Yep. Yep. Everything went went great with that. Um, you know, that pregnancy was was probably the one of the easiest ones that she had out of the three. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, Serena, what about your uh, you, your kids are a little bit older, right? We're mm -hmm. talking teenagers now. Have uh, they caught have on two, to this at all? I have two adult kids, 23 and 21, and then a 17 and a 15 year old. Uh, no. Um, and I just, I, you know, I'm, I want them to make the decision on their own. They're, you know, they're too old now for me to boss them around all of them. Um, and they're, you know, pretty set in their ways. And, you know, it's like dealing with an adult, you know, at this point. And so um, I don't really push them. I, you know, just try to encourage them. They have a pretty heavy, um, it's not meat based, but very much more protein than your average person. So they have a lot more meat, a lot more protein than your average um, 15 and 17 year olds. Our 23 year old is married and doesn't live with us anymore, but they eat, um, they eat pretty healthy. They do eat vegetables, but they eat a mainly healthy diet. Um, and our son is 21 and, you know, he works a full-time job and uh, it's okay. You know, I mean, everybody's diet could be better if you're not you know, like a strict carnivore. And so they definitely could do better. And what I want is to be a good example. And I want them to see how I feel and see the things that I could do versus friends, you know, friends that can't do the things that I can do. And they see, you know, the people all around us that are sick all the time. And, you know, they see people my age that aren't very healthy. And so what I'm hoping is that eventually it ends up being a good enough example for them that they you know, veer more towards a meat-based diet. But like I said, they do eat, they eat all the, almost all the meats, you know, that we eat. And if they want something extra on the side, they make that themselves. So they do pretty good. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I find it to me, it's a little bit scary. I know this is probably for another discussion, but you know, I, I got a little bit scared. Like I, I, I never really had my kids like strict, strict carnivore, but there was a time where I was kind of testing that out when they were a little bit younger. And I don't know, I just had a little bit of reservations around that. I, I think that, you know, I think it's like a great elimination diet, especially if you have like health issues and stuff like that. I just don't know if it, if it's, you know, what the impact of that might be long-term, especially with like kids, maybe kids might need carbohydrates more than, than adults do. Right. So um, I didn't want to play around with it too much. So I'm, I'm pretty lenient, you know, at least in the carnivore world, I, I think I'm pretty liberal compared to a lot of parents out there. Like I still let my kids have birthday cake. And, and when I say that, I mean, we, we're, we go to birthdays like every weekend. So they probably yeah. eat a slice of birthday cake at least once a week. But, but aside from that, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, like as long as they, I just cut out the processed foods most of the time, yeah. like at our, at our daycare you know, I don't let them eat the snacks there because it's all cheese its and goldfish mm -hmm. and, and just junk, right? So I would love to see parents, you know, or schools incorporating stuff like that, like super chews or power pucks. I mean, that would be awesome. You know, it'd yeah. be great to be it'd great to see these things in stores. Matt, have you ever thought about sort of making this more mainstream? I know you have a, like a loyal cult following right now of <laughs> of uh, of followers, myself included, my kids, but. Um, you know, is this something we've ever seen in stores? Do you think? I think, uh, yes. So like right now, the, 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 the problem is, is finding a way to make larger volumes of it. Um, you know, it's, it's really difficult. Uh, you know, a lot of the gummy, the companies that make, um, large batches of gummies I've, 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 I've approached and a lot of them won't make the super chews because they don't have sugar in it. 
and they use gelatin instead of pectin, which is really weird. But a lot of these guys, they're like, oh, no, we're a plant based facility. So we want you to use pectin instead of gelatin. And um, we need you to use sugar um, and because that makes it more shelf life stable and, and things like that. And uh, and so I haven't been able to find somebody that could actually help us really scale up. Um, so we've been trying to do that ourselves. And um, we're getting better and better at it. Um, and so we'll eventually get there ourselves, I think, if we can't find another person to help us do it. The bear bar, though, we are able to uh, you do that in a uh, with a co-packer. Um, so that one is nice. I found a local company that is small and they only co-pack for local companies. And um, we've done a test run with them already. I was there um, with them every step of the way, mixing the ingredients and, and it went through the machinery great. So we can actually do large, um, large scale runs of the bear bar. So I think that might be the first product that we could put in stores if we want to go that route. Um, we can't use a co-packer for the, um, the power pucks right now because of, uh, it's a USDA rule where if you have more than 30% of your ingredients is tallow, you have to make it in a USDA uh, registered facility, which there basically isn't any of those. Um, none that co-pack like a bar. So if you've That's ever wondered, good. yeah, if you've ever wondered why nobody uses tallow uh, for for products, it's because you can't use any, basically any of the co-packing facilities that everybody else uses. Um, that's that's why insane. People, yeah. So why, why is that? What, what, it's just why old, is tallow so heavily regulated? I don't understand that. From what I've been able to learn, it's just an old rule that they came up with um, a long time ago and it's just never changed. Um, and it just says, if you use 30, 30% 30 or more of your product by weight is uh, tallow, then it needs to be in a USDA facility. The only exception is if you're uh, making that um, basically in a commercial kitchen and selling direct to consumers like we are. So selling directly online. Um, you know, one thing I've been messing or toying around with is uh, I could actually make a new puck that's uh, kind of half and half, half cacao, half tallow. And it would um, be under the 30% um, so you could sell it in stores if you wanted to. And, uh, um, and it would, you know, ideally it would have kind of the benefits of both of the pucks. It would have the, um, the higher melting point that the cacao has. Um, and then also the, the incremental vitamins that the tallow has. So yeah. I've actually made a couple of them and I think they taste really good. Um, they're, it's it's interesting. You can you can definitely taste the cacao and you can definitely taste the tallow. Um, so it's kind of hard to describe, but I'm I'm working with uh, um, the kitchen time right now to try to come up. Um, hopefully, in the next maybe month, we can do a, like a chocolate test batch where we just make like a, a bunch of chocolate half and half pucks and and then let people order those and see what they think. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. I, I want to see how it works on the, with like the melting and temperature issues too. Well, That's I'll great. tell you right now, I'm actually freaking out right now because I just got an email saying my my power puck delivery was <laughs> just got here, and it's like freaking forty <laughs> million degrees Fahrenheit here. So, yeah. Okay, so here's here's one thing. I'm gonna wrap it up quickly though. But here's the thing: because he he needs his fix. He needs I to know, go out. Oh and my god! I know. I'm dying for it right now. We're talking <laughs> about this. Like I, I I'm dying for a power puck right now, especially the wafer cream. Um, <laughs> but. Favorite. So, okay, so there is a lot of hostility between power puck users, between cacao and, and tallow. <laughs> Personally, I think the people who think tallow is better should be taken out back and shot because I don't know how you can not like the crunch of the cacao butter. The, the crunch is what does it for me with the mm -hmm. with the, the crunch of the, the, the pork rinds in there. Let's go around the table here. Tallow or cacao, Serena? Tallow. I mean, I, I like, I oh. say, so, hey, Hold on. Oh. I, I like the cacao. I like the cacao, but um, honestly, the very, I think I'm 99% sure that the first product that I ate like regularly, that was not a carnivore product was, or that wasn't a meat, you know, or a cheese or, or eggs was a power puck. I mean, like I made the exception to try power pucks. And so for me, it's tallow all the way because that's more in line with, you know, kind of carnivore, but I have to say, that I like the cacao. I mean, I've tried them, of course, and I do really like them. I like the texture a lot. It does feel more like a normal candy, but I, I do think for some people that have a past of eating disorders or disordered eating or addictive tendencies, or, you know, there are carb addicts that can be kind of a dangerous slope. So I think that's why a lot of people like 
the tallow one better, the people that are more purists and more, you know, more strict with their diets don't really want the cacao one, but I do like the cacao one, Scott. It's nothing against cacao in general. It's just that I'm a carnivore. So the tallow just kind of falls in line, but I do like it. And I'm really intrigued by, I mean, I'm intrigued by the, by a cacao and tallow mix, maybe giving a little bit more of that cacao texture, but also, you know, having more tallow than the cacao by itself. So I am, I am curious about that too. I'm intrigued by that idea. So I'll tell you, I, I, I would I like, definitely be down for that. I like, uh, um, I like the vanilla and the wafer cream in tallow. And I like the two chocolates, chocolate and chocolate peanut butter in cacao. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say with this, this kind of half and half ones that we've made so far, um, my oldest son, like I said, he had, he had had candy before we started making these. And so he only likes the cacao ones. And uh, my youngest son, he'll eat the tallow ones all day long because that's the first kind that he had. But with my oldest son, when we made these half and halves, I gave them to him because he's like a super, he, he would have known immediately if there was tallow in there. And I gave it to him and he just ate it like it was the cacao one. So oh, it's it's interesting because it's got like the, it's got the harder bite like the cacao does, um, like when you bite it off, but then it's got the more like melt in your mouth faster uh, because of the tallow. So it's. Nice. It's hard to describe, but yeah, I want to make uh, I want to make uh, a a big batch of it and and uh, let people let other people see what they think because I think it might yeah. be uh, it might be like almost the best of both worlds kind of. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely try it. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's let's. Uh, you guys have two amazing businesses. I love supporting carnivore businesses. Um, you know, I, I fell in love with our sponsors, the Meat Stock. And Serena's uh, Purely Tallow was a sponsor. And obviously, you guys at PowerPuck were sponsors as well. Um, first, Matt, maybe let's just start with you. How can we find PowerPucks? How we could, how could we order them? Um, tell us all your information. Of course. Uh, so currently, our website is thepowerpuck.com. Um, there you can go and order the Super Chews, the PowerPucks. Um, you can get the Pocket PowerPucks, which are the smaller versions of the PowerPucks that are easier to carry around. Um, we will have the bear bars there, hopefully in like a month and a half or something like that, uh, with the first batch at least. Um, we also are in the middle of kind of uh, rebranding our name from Power Puck to Power Fit Foods. And uh, the reason we're doing that is we just, when we initially started the company, we thought we were just going to be making Power Pucks. And now obviously we got the Super Chews, we got the bear bars coming out. Um, so we, uh, we, we've expanded beyond just the one uh, product. So we're going to change the name of the company to, uh, not confuse with what, uh, exactly we sell, but, um, you know, that'll probably be another probably four to six weeks before we actually roll that out. So in the meantime, just, uh, the powerpuck.com is where you can go and, and, uh, purchase everything we've talked about so far. Awesome. Sounds great. And, uh, Serena, maybe you just tell us about purely tallow a little bit. I, uh, I put it on my face every day. If you guys could tell, so you could look back at my previous videos. I know Sean Baker. Sean Baker was caking his face. He was caking his legs and his feet in it all day long. So tell us a little bit more about your uh, your skincare lotion. So I make tallow lotions. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Nice fluffy whipped tallow lotions. Also facial oil cleanser, night cream, lip balm, and we have lots of different products on the website at purelytallow.com. And I have to say that I was I was doing this business on a really small scale until I met Allison and Matt. Um, I went to their house and stayed for and spent the night there for three nights for a meetup last year in Colorado in the, in the fall. I guess it was like end of August, Scott. I mean, I'll, right, Matt? Was that right? End of August? Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. And um, it was amazing. And I and I got to know their family, got to you know spend time with them. And I watched Allison and Matt do this business. And I just thought, why am I not doing that? Why am I just like kind of really slow here just you know like I just I watched them and I just thought I could totally I could do that like why am I not doing that and so I came home and within I don't know like three weeks I had a Shopify site because Matt was telling me how great Shopify was and I bought a label printer which cut our shipping time down like in half my 15 and 17 year old daughters helped me with everything Um, I was sick in bed last week for nine days and they basically ran the company for me they sent out orders they did I just printed the orders from you know from my phone in bed and they did everything for me. So they have been a huge help. But Matt walked me through uh, kind of the whole process of 
getting going with Shopify and a million, I asked him a million questions and then learning how to use the Rolo printer. And, and I still ask them questions, but, um, but meeting them was just such a blessing to me and staying in their home and being a guest there and learning about their business. And I just, I think that the more times, like I said, at the beginning, the more times we can support our, you know, our small business friends, you know, all of these companies that are out here, you know, trying to make good products for people, healthy products, everywhere we can reduce toxins in our life is going to make a huge difference. So even if you're not a carnivore, even if you're not even low carb, if you like these bars and you like the lotion and you choose to buy these things over, over a, you know, big store, you know, or a big company's product, you're helping out small business owners and doing something good for yourself too, because you're not having all of the talking toxins and all of those other ingredients. And so I think anywhere we can support a small business without breaking the bank or going over our budgets, um, that that's, that's what we should be doing. And so I buy a lot of products from all of these small companies or smaller companies like Redmond and Element and Power Pucks and, you know, carnivore snacks. And I buy so many products from smaller companies um, because it helps them too. And it keeps this community growing and keeps this community going. And so, um, yeah, so I make lotions <laughs> and all kinds of other products and they're on Purely Tallow's website. Don't forget about the beard oil. I oh yeah, that. and oh yeah, and I make a hair and beard oil. That was um, Matt's request. It has emu oil in it <laughs> and tallow and there's a scented and an unscented version. I forgot about that. I also make a spray lotion that's made with emu oil. So you can just kind of spray it you know, and then rub it on. Um, the night cream, the facial oil cleanser is really nice. And oh, a new product with Bulgarian rose oil that I was able to order from a rose plantation in Bulgaria and have that sent over. And so that's been a fun addition too, is all those rose products. But yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> do you have, do you have an affiliate code for Parapox Serena? I, I typically use yours. It's Serena, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So you had yeah. 10% off use Serena's code, I believe. Yep. Um, so use that to, to get your discount on power pucks and I'm going to go, go outside my door right now. Hopefully they're all melted in box, but, uh, no. I'm going to go eat me some power puck right now. And, uh, thanks so much for coming on guys. I want to link all their information in the description below. Talk soon. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye.